So I thought I'd take you through this restoration of a lovely piece of history uh, that I managed to pick up off eBay. Uh, it's a Type 7 Stanley jointer plane uh, from 1933. So I'm just starting by pulling it all apart. Uh, I find it's best to just strip everything down to its core components and then you can see what you've got. <laughs> Here I'm just trying to keep track of all these small parts somehow. Uh, I'm throwing a lot of oil at stuff and just trying to disassemble the plane with as little effort as possible, really. So this little screw here keeps the frog attached to the plane bed and it just wouldn't budge. So what I'm doing is I'm using a little bit of heat to rapidly expand the rust around the screw. And the idea is to just crack that rust. But you don't want to put too much heat into the cast iron because cast iron actually cracks itself quite easily <laughs> with differences of heat. So I was quite nervous while doing this, but it came together in the end. So then the frog just came off after that, and that was the last major component that needs to come off the plane. So here I'm taking the lever cap iron, which is that silver thing, um, and it's actually chrome plated, which I'm pretty sure isn't original. So I want to strip all that. Uh, it just looks shiny and awful. So I'm using bleach here. This is apparently what you use, <laughs> according to the internet. <laughs> I guess we'll find out if that's true together. <laughs> and then everything else gets thrown on the wire wheel. Uh, I'll save you the hours of uh, hours of footage that took place here. But this is just to remove all of the dirt and grime and rust uh, that was too stubborn to come off earlier. And I was a little bit sad about the condition of the original Japan finish here. Uh, so unfortunately I had to paint this off camera. And this is the front knob and the rear tote. And these were covered in the original thick black paint. So I'm stripping that and I just want to go for a much more subtle finish. So. In the end, I chose some oil. And I'll spare you the hours of hand sanding that took place here. Um, I didn't go all the way. Uh, you can see some of those original kind of dirty marks and stuff on it. Uh, I was just taking off way too much wood. And to be honest, I quite like those marks. They give the plane some character and show that it's not, you know, a new thing. And this is a water-based uh, rosewood stain. These handles, uh, I think, are originally maple. So if I'd oiled them straight off, they'd have looked quite blonde. So I'm just darkening them up, just keeping that kind of traditional feel. And this is just another plane that I finished in the same way. So then they got soaked in linseed oil overnight, as promised. And uh, this is the first time I've done this, and I was actually really pleased with how they came out. Just have that wonderful amber sheen to them. So I think I'll be doing this on a couple of my other tools as well. You can see some of those black marks kind of showing through the oil. I thought they came out really well. So then the frog uh, and all the kind of the machine surfaces on the plane get dressed. Uh, this is a diamond plate I'm using because it's a really flat reference surface. So I know that I can uh, sand the metal and kind of abrade the metal without losing its flatness. So after that, this will get polished up on a buffing wheel. Back to this lever cap iron, it was clear that the internet had lied to me. Uh, the chrome is still very much attached. <laughs> but um, what was happening was it was accelerating or perhaps removing some of the rust on it. Um, so I decided to put in all of the small screws as well. These can be a real pain to strip all the rust off otherwise. Uh, so hopefully a couple of days in this and all the rust will fall off. So yeah, so that spent about three days in solution uh, and then they got pulled out. I don't want to leave them too long because as I said, I don't really know what this solution does. <laughs> I think it... I think it removes the rust, but for all I know, it could just be eating away at these components. 
perhaps someone can tell me down in the comments. So all the small parts then got dressed on the wire wheel out of camera. And here I'm using soap and water. And what I'm trying to do is degrease these components. Uh, I essentially want to remove all of the oil and gunk and kind of surface grime that might still be on them. Um, because now I'm going to blue them. And bluing is a process where you oxidize the surface of the metal uh, chemically. And what this does is it creates a thin barrier to any rust uh, forming on the surface of the metal. Uh, and it's a really effective treatment. Um, it's actually the first time I'm doing this. Uh, so, And I was, I was actually super pleased with how these parts turned out. It's not the most uh, hard wearing finish is the only thing about bluing. And so if you do this on something that has a lot of wear or a lot of usage, it can it can rub off really quickly. But for these small machined components, it's, it's absolutely fine. So then they got dried off with a hairdryer, so there was no moisture sitting on them. And then a quick shot of an aerosol-based oil to just keep them nice and rust-free until I finally assembled the plane. Back to the plane bed, and by this point I'd worked out that isopropanol was probably a better degreaser than soap and water. And the plane bed gets the same treatment. Most likely this bluing will just wear off. But I do a lot of my work in quite a damp garage, and so I was just going for anything that I can get really. So dried off again with the hairdryer. Typically leaving water sitting on uh, these metal components isn't a great idea. And then all this kind of residue got wiped off as well. And you can see there a freshly painted plain body there. And then this is beeswax that I'm just heating up. Uh, the idea is to get a really thin coating over the metal. And it's a very similar concept to the bluing. You're just creating a thin barrier to any rust forming. Um, and the beeswax also fills in all of the pitting in the metal, all of the kind of dips where rust has historically gone in. So then that frog advancement screw that was so stubborn earlier goes back in with a little bit of oil. And then the frog gets bolted back down to the plane bed. The uh, front knob then gets screwed down with its brass top to screw and then the uh, rear tote goes in as well and this one has two screws and then this is the blade and chip breaker stack and this uh, I sharpen this and dress this off screen and there you can see the lever cap on I actually blued in the end I ended up grinding all of the chrome off by hand <laughs> so And so what the lever cap iron does is it actually sets the tension on the blade. So it keeps the blade uh, firmly pressed into the plane body so that the blade can take really nice shavings. And that screw at the front there sets that tension. And here it is, the finished plane. So I christened it on this piece of white oak that I was preparing for a tabletop uh, and it left just a lovely surface with some lovely paper thin shavings. So thank you for making it this far. It came out really nicely, I think. 
This is actually eight months after I finished restoring this tool. Uh, the bluing on the sides and the cap iron just still looks wicked. The handles I just absolutely love. The sole, as I expected, the, the bluing's worn off and at a couple of the first pieces of timber I playing with this tool, you'd get black streaks. So possibly not something I recommend. Uh, I've taken to polishing my other plane beds and that seems to work really nicely. Uh, so I think I might at some stage polish this up, but we'll see. This is a board of chestnut that I'm just preparing. So table aside, <laughs> need to build this properly. You can see it's taking really nice shavings, really, really paper thin. Lovely bit kit. Guys, thank you for watching uh, and stay safe out there. Cheers.